This is Charlie Parsons for the Boxing Voice. Delighted to be joined by Ziad Almayouf. I hope I'm correct with that. Uh, correct with that. Yeah, yeah. Goes by Zizo. Um, obviously, working with Rachel Charles, a brilliant woman who helped my way into the industry, and uh, now happy to, you know, do her a favour and jump on Zoom with you and create a connection with yourself. Zizo, how are you, brother? I'm good. I'm good. How are you, Charlie? Like I said, I've seen and heard a lot about you. Rachel talks about you a lot. And I've seen Rich is actually a great person since we're on that. She's helped me a lot with my career and I've seen she's helped a lot of people. So I feel like I'm in good hands. That's it. You are, brother. I'm all good. I'm all good, obviously. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your boxing career. Where did it first begin for you? When did you, what was that memory where you're first lacing up the gloves? How was boxing installed in you from, from when it began? Yeah, so... I'm from Saudi Arabia, you know, I was born actually here in New York and um, I was raised in Egypt with my mother and that's where everything started for me. I was uh, training back in Egypt. I got into tennis at first and that was my thing. I was uh, kind of successful at that, but uh, in Egypt, we don't really have separate boxing gyms. We don't have individual boxing gyms or individual sport gyms. What we have is one sports center that has everything. So you see all the sports together. If you're training at one sport, you're seeing the other one right there too. So when I was doing my tennis practices and warm up, I'd, I'd always see the boxing kids across and there was no ring there was no equipment, no heavy bags, no speed bags, double end bags. You know, it was just the coach and his mitts and the kids standing there. And then um, if it's sparring, for example, you'd see them creating a ring with yeah. people, you know. So <laughs> so I like the I'd always, you know, feel that intensity and I'd hear the suspense and their voices and all that. That's what I was really attached to. That's what I wanted to do. I find myself zoning out in my tennis practice. And eventually I had to open up that discussion with my family about doing that instead. So obviously you talk about Egypt and the sports facilities not really being sort of cater made for one thing as a whole, but being for a variety of sports. Like you say, you've got the sort of tennis in there as well. What was mm -hmm. it about boxing when you say that? I mean, I imagine with tennis, you know, you have the full courts and everything. But with boxing, if there's no ring and it's just a trainer with mitts, how did you fall in love with it if it was as raw and as pure as that is? I, I think it was the, the intensity in the coach's voice. So I owe a lot to that coach. Um, he was my first coach ever. He's passed away now. But I owe a lot to him because he was very serious. He always treated us boxing in the Arab world like, like the future is there for us. Like we could do something. Like we could change the world of boxing in the Arab world, even though there was really absolutely no hope. No one's even given us the uh, slightest hope that we could follow through. There was no blueprint to follow, you know what I mean? So I, I think what really attracted me to it was that there was so much history to be written in it. And so that's, that's what I wanted to do. So for me, how could I get the opportunity to represent so many countries and so many nations and make history and say no that's not what I want to do I'm not that type of person I had to jump right on it so for you obviously Saudi Arabian born in New York and then you know I imagine still in the states now and then sort of growing up in Egypt um, is that it for you you sort of feel quite a strong connection with America Egypt and Saudi Arabia and you sort of want to show that I suppose a bit like Oscar De La Hoya at the Olympics you know you can represent more than one country and do more than one country proud yeah I feel like I, I actually feel like I'm a true citizen of the world like they say yeah. you know what I mean I'm uh, born somewhere raised there from there you know and I'm attached to so many cultures and and countries and families and people. So I'm, I'm a real like people's champ, you know what I mean? Uh, so it's nice to be in the sport to represent just people. I'm not representing a, a specific nation or a specific team. There's so much history to be written for the Arab world. I'm representing Saudi Arabia at heart. You know what I mean? This is where, this is where I owe so much to, but, we always have 
a responsibility as humans and as people before we do as athletes. And I think that's what I want to stress coming up in the sport. Well, we, you talk about, you know, being the people's champion. We know that the great of the sport, Muhammad Ali, was a man who was, you know, he was the people's champion. He still is to this day. You know, there's documentaries on Netflix and films about Muhammad Ali. Um, when you see someone like that who's who's able to sort of resonate with the public how he did back then, you know, fighting for the causes he believes in and the fact that, you know, he sort of still sells his story now. And, you know, we see plenty of boxers overcome adversity to get into the positions they're in. Do you take inspiration for people like that? Obviously, you talk about the people's champion. I imagine for you, it's sort of resonating with the fans as well and understanding the culture and what, what the people supporting you go through. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, look, uh, Muhammad Ali is someone you can't, like, you can't just say his name and not get so many emotions at once. You know what I mean? Uh, he's a true great for what he's done outside of the sport more than what he's done what he's done even inside the sport we can't like forget that he was jailed and suspended during his prime so that was insane we've never seen muhammad ali's prime in yeah. terms of physically and performance we've only seen his actions outside of the ring and all of that of course passes on to what i'm trying to do there is so much to be changed in sports back in the Arab world there is so much history to be written uh, for Saudi Arabia for my people in Egypt for everyone there's so much history to be written and I feel like the eyes are on me there are a lot of eyes on me right now so how I persevere from adversity and how I react to what's thrown on me is going to set a blueprint for whoever's going to come after me so I think for, for me, I always say God rewards us for how we react when we're tested and, how, and not how we, we're reacting when everything's going our way. Yeah. So how you react when you're tested is what really matters. So for example, I was going to have my pro debut on June 5th and just minutes before walking out, minutes, I'm telling you, fight outfits on, the commission is there, referees giving instructions. The commission walks in and they say, your opponent got disqualified. He failed his drug test. And it's like, if he failed his drug test because of, you know, uh, a pre-workout, I tell you, okay, but he, it was just drugs, you know? So everyone was giving him trouble. Everyone was shouting. Everyone was just giving him a bad 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 time when he came and talked to me and i don't know how how he thought that was a good idea but you know because i've worked so long i've sacrificed so much i have family behind i've done everything but he walked up to me and he said you know i'm sorry for doing this and stuff at that moment i thought how i'm going to react now is going to determine the rewards i get later on so, like I say, we have responsibilities as human beings before we do in the sport. So, I had to take it in in a good way. I had to treat him well. I had to talk to him in a good way because tomorrow he's going to wake up and do the same thing. You know what I mean? He's, not, he's got nothing to lose. So, how we react in situations like that is what determines really what type of athlete you are, not how you win your fights or uh, how you get your knockouts. The, this isn't really what a fighter is. What a fighter is, is how you act when you test. So me reacting in one way or another wouldn't change the course of what happened. So might as well do it in a good way. You know what I mean? That's always what matters ultimately. Well, obviously, Rachel told me at the time that it happened and, you know, it's, it's sort of a little bit of time has, has gone since then. But I suppose the debut career is something that, you know, people always look back on. You know, we look at the people, the big figures in the sport now and when their show reels are being played, it always stems to the beginning of that first performance you know that's the first clip that we see in the video so you know there's so much riding on the debut for yourself um obviously it did fall through and you say that you know 
you believe that the rewards that you reap will be, you know, based off how, how you react at the time. And obviously you reacted in a uh, what, what seems like a fairly calm and composed way. But, you know, that was your professional debut for you. That was everything. Like you say, you know, a lot of fights get pulled, but not when you're in the dressing room, you're ready to yeah. fight. You've got the commission there. You've got the referee talking to you. At the time when you get that news, how crushing and demoralising is that for you? Because that's everything, you know, that moment was everything you trained for. So look, definitely in the heat of the moment, it's a tough pill to swallow. But seconds after, you have to move on because it, the, it, nothing is going to change. So you being upset about it, you being angry about it, isn't going to change what happened. So there's always a positive outlook on anything. You know what I mean? And I'm a very, like... I'm a very big believer in my religion. I'm a man of God, you know, so everything to me happens for a reason. I'm never ever going to question what God has written for me or why he's put me in specific situations because I know that it's for the better. I, we never know what could have happened in that pro debut. I know I was ready. I know I could say, I know I was ready. I was going to knock him out in the first round, all that, but we never really know. So I always have to think that what's happened happened for the better and maybe what's happening to me is that i set an example for whoever's going to come after me or who for whoever is watching me for any difficulties they're facing in, in life not just boxing but in life in general in work and exams right when something is not going your way you could look at it either half empty or half full and you always have to just look at the positives of it you know the debut is very important there's so much history to be written just in the debut to be the first local Arab fighter to make it that far internationally with such a coach, such a manager, all that stuff. I understand all that, but it'll come. You know what I mean? It'll come. And you have to trust that it will come at the right time. So I've gotten the experience of the whole fight. I've yeah. gotten the commissions, the commissioner talking to me. I've got, I've went through fight day mentally. I've discovered what I could take, what I couldn't take. I've gotten the heat of the moment, the face off, the weigh-ins, the referee instructions, you know, all that pre-fight butterflies. I've gotten everything. Just not, just not the only thing that God didn't see it was time for. And I'm fine with that. And the reception back home and the reputation I got from what happened because of that fight, because of it, it's so rare what happened. Yeah. People want to know who it happened to. And once they've known who it happened to, they want to know who that kid is. So I've actually gained so much from what's happened, maybe even more than if I just fought and won with a knockout in the first round. So at the heat of the moment, it's a tough pill to swallow. But as soon as an incident like that happens in your life, seconds after, you got to think, okay, not what I'm going to do next. It has to be what am I going to do next positively? Because nothing else is going to change the course of what happened. And nothing else is going to change the course of what's going to happen unless you act positively. If you act negatively, what's going to happen is still going to happen. It's just how are people going to see you? How are people going to look at you? It's very important. And we need to really focus on that as athletes we a lot of eyes are on us people idolize us people look at us and i'm still to make my pro debut but the journey is so big that so many eyes are on me already thank god i have to always think all right this is this is where i'm going to set an example for both me for both how i was raised me and the people that are watching right now that's very important so it'll come i'm i'm not doubting that at the right time well, that's a lesson for all of us, I'm sure, because I know I've acted hot-headed in, in moments before, but I'm a thing. You know what Zizo said? Zizo said, <laughs> overcome the adversity and move on. Yeah. <laughs> um, finally, for me to wrap this up, your goals in boxing, obviously, you know, it stems from a very different to the traditional boxing uh, story that we hear, you know, in, in Egypt and, and your Saudi Arabian heritage, which isn't massive in the boxing world. Mm -hmm. um your your goal was it in this sport well as you said uh the arab world specifically saudi arabia right now they're booming in the world of boxing they've been bringing boxing back 
home to Saudi Arabia, and they've been trying to do so for so many years. Uh, yet they didn't know before that they have their own star that's been in the making. And now that they've known and they, they are seeing that uh, a fighter, a local fighter from the Arab, from the Arab world representing Saudi Arabia, training with a coach like Buddy McGirt, yeah. from a place where I didn't have a ring, a speed bag or a double end bag, all that, that's historical. But I've been doing this for years. And so they have one of their own now. They've been incredibly supportive of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the Boxing Federation. Uh, they've all been supporting me on this journey and giving me everything I need to succeed, really. So now it's all up to me. So my goals in the sport is, first of all, to be the first professional world champion in boxing as a local air fighter, representing if it's Saudi Arabia, if it's Egypt, if it's Algeria, if it's... Uh, Morocco, everything, every single Arab country I want to represent because, you know, unity is so strong and we're all humans at the same time. So it's perfect to do it that way. Um, I also want to not just have one title or two titles. I want to have them all. I want to have them, yeah, I, undisputed. And I want to have them all in many weight classes, you know, God willing, uh, inshallah, like we say in my religion. So um this is something i really want to do and bring boxing back home to the arab world as a as an arab fighter be that symbol of hope give them that blueprint on how to do it after i'm done something that i didn't have i didn't have that blueprint on what to do who to trust who to talk to how to get to a uh, wild card or buddy mcgirt as a coach or how to travel how to stay you know i didn't get all that i had to really discover it and sometimes it on the way exactly i had to sometimes discover it the hard way years and years of sparring here and just coming home every day of sparring all beaten up and bloody until i've managed to get it right so i want to just more importantly, represent my people, represent our culture, our manners, before I represent them in a professional and athletic way. You know, then this will, like, I, like I've said, it'll come. This will come. When you chase greatness, everything else will come with the, the fame, the titles, undisputed, you know. Um, but eventually, I like how the sport is right now progressing we have more research and to me because i'm doing this for so many people not just myself if i was doing it for myself only i would have quit a long time ago you know how tough boxing gets but because there's so much at stake and i'm doing it for such a huge country in the united kingdom of saudi arabia or such a huge person in my mother who is so attached to egypt um this is very important for me so once I've achieved what I want to achieve, once I've grabbed those titles, I don't plan on being one of those fighters that hangs around for too long. Uh, I hope to pave the way for those who come after me. And maybe those who come after me could do better than I, than I have. But as long as I make it easier on them and I show them that manners and respect come before you know your athletic responsibilities, that's what's important. But one thing for sure, Charlie, is... When that debut comes, when that title fight comes, when that title eliminator comes, I'm telling you right now, don't blink because it will be over quick. <laughs> don't blink. Well, I look forward to seeing the journey unfold and hopefully, you know, keeping in touch with Rachel and coming to many appearances throughout your career. Um, oh hopefully we can get things to a good start when you do finally get that date for the pro debut. Cesar, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for your Thank time. You Just a final gentlemen. message. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone back home. Thank you to the Arab world. Thank you to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Thank you to Egypt, my parents, my father, my mother, who stay up way too long praying for me. I'm going to get it done. We will get it done together. And, uh, uh, you know, utmost, I want to thank God. Thank God for everything. I'm always happy and satisfied with whatever God has written for me and what he's going to give me. So let's get that win for that pro debut in every fight that's going to come after. I can't wait to go through the whole roller coaster.
And thank you, Charlie. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to get my message out there and to talk and to speak and just to let people know who Zizo is. Of course, anytime. Thank you for speaking to me at the Boxing Voice. All right.